Okay, so in this one we're going to talk about triangles and ingons and subdivision workflow here. And so we'll get started just by creating a plane and kind of modeling on it a little bit. Hit Control-1, we can go ahead and, whoop, in object mode, hit Control-1, go ahead and subdivide it. You'll find that as you're working on projects that sometimes you might end up with a triangle or an ingon and it still seems to subdivide fine. And most of the time, um, you know, you hear other artists, they say, hey, don't use triangles, don't use ingons, but you can, and there's a reason why, um, but you got to kind of break it down to kind of figure out what's going on, right? And so if I was to just do something kind of crazy here, and I just kind of cut through here a little bit, right? and we subdivide it, take a look at the wireframe here, it still subdivides. All right, I can bump up the subdivision count, and not a not a big deal. I'm going to turn it off in edit mode, though. Seems like it's working mostly fine. But if we go ahead and turn on optimal display or turn off optimal display, you'll see that what it's doing is it's creating some poles here or there. Okay, so you might want to continue working on it, turning these into quads, and that's not too hard, generally speaking. But um, as you do this might find an instance where, well, nothing's really changed, even though they're quads now, right? So what's going on here? Why is this happening? And what, you know, what's this madness, right? So let's get started with the plane again. And I'm going to turn one into a quad or into an ingon and one into a, a triangle here. So I'm going to merge these two vertices together and merge at the center. This one, I'm going to just subdivide this one edge. Pull it on out, and there we go. That's an ingon, right? Five points, five edges or more with a single face. And a triangle is three points, three edges, single face. And you want to use quads because, generally speaking, it's good for topology. Like, it's good for your to be able to have edge flow and be able to control your mesh much better. Um, but how how come you can still use these, right? And why? Well, there's a ton of technical reasons. Like you could, you'll get blown away if you look into the technicality of it. I'm going to keep it here in layman's terms. But what's going on is they're being subdivided. And so the way they subdivide is it's almost like if you do a poke face. So if you select the face and right click, you can poke the face. You can see it creates a single vert at the middle, right? And we can poke this one as well. And this, this is kind of happening, right? But it's also subdividing each edge, just like I did earlier, where it's adding a single vertex or more if you're um, bumping up the levels in the viewport there with the subdivision surface modifier. So this is what it's doing. And then it's actually like reshifting everything around. So all of these are being uh, hidden, and then it's actually connecting these. So it's going to be like a little J here. And if I hit Control X and dissolve those, well, limit dissolve them. It's going to end up doing something like that, but all the way around the shape. Just to prove this point, I'm going to grab all of these and um, do a limit dissolve. You see it gets rid of quite a bit of that. Okay. Pull them on up. I'm going to hit Control-1. And I'm going to apply these subdivision modifiers on these shapes here. And I, you'll see that that's exactly what's occurring, right? So it pokes it, and it adds a single vert to all those edges and it reshifts the edges there okay so why it shifts the edges I'm not real sure myself but so what's going on over here is the same thing when you subdivide a triangle or you subdivide a um, an ingon you see here what it's doing it's breaking these shapes down in this mesh here okay even though these are quads right now um, it's breaking them down in a manner let me merge all of it real quick, just to make sure. Okay. It's going to break them down into their basic primitive shapes, more or less. So, I was to limit dissolve this again. We have those, that same topology going, but it, it maintains the topology. So, you can use them, and you, it even ends up doing exactly what you think it should do. But the trick here is when you apply this subdivision, You'll see that they're still highlighted. This is how they ended up being laid out here. Okay. Face is poked. 
subdivides in the corners. Now, sometimes this will work out well, sometimes it won't, all right? But generally speaking, all ingons and triangles will turn into quads, okay? So just keep that in mind as you're working with your mesh and you have a subdivision surface modifier applied to it. Um, turn off the optimal display and you can see what's going on with your model and see if it's the topology is working out for you. Because I can tell you right now, um, the way I would work with this is if you're doing a block out, a very rough 3D model, you can get away with using as many ingons or triangles as you want. Apply one subdivision to it, hit control A, and voila, you have a mesh now that's all quads. Okay. So you can just go in here, press uh, I to inset, hit B, hold control, and you can push it in. And you can not have to delete those little edges there that normally come with an extrusion. And now we can resubdivide this. And then we're going to get this result. Okay. So the trick about it, though, is this right here. Okay. This single vert right here has three edges coming out of it. This is called an end pole. And this one over here is called an e-pole. It has five or more edges coming out of it. Okay. And so these poles can be problematic for your topology. I'll turn it off in edit mode real quick. But we can see that they exist at certain points along this. All right, there's a pole there. And that's a uh, three point, I think. Or no, that's five, actually. There's another pole. It's easier to see it with subdivision sometimes. There's another pole. Here's a uh, three point. An in pole. And the end poles are actually okay usually in these kind of areas. It usually doesn't do too bad. However, this having poles on um, hard edges, if you were trying to make like a hard surface model, not a very good thing. You can leave them there usually, generally speaking, if you're doing um, more of a like soft organic shape. So you'll see a lot of times they're on characters, sometimes on the cheekbones, near the cheekbones, things like that. But uh, for hard surface edges, it's a bad idea because what it does is it starts pulling the topology out. And so a e-pole, if we turn off optimal display again, when it subdivides, it gets stretched apart. Okay. Whereas an end pole becomes pinched together. Okay. And a lot of times it's advisable to push a pole off of the, uh, the edge there. So how can you fix that? Uh, the easiest method is doing a inset, but pressing O so it's actually an outset. You have to be careful while doing this, though, because it can cause problems in your topology in certain places, um, especially when you have closed meshes and all that. So with that in mind, if I press I to do the inset like normal, and I hit O now, I can actually do an outset like this. So you got to be a little bit careful. Don't overdo it. And all we're doing is adding a little bit extra control and adding like a control loop around it. This is the easiest way to do this. There's a ton of um, like topology guides that'll say cut here, cut here, cut there. Uh, you don't have to do all that, all right? And you can add loop cuts to tighten up the top and the bottom. You could add a single loop cut and also bevel it, kind of fill in those areas. As long as your shape's parallel, it won't, it won't cause any problems. And now we've pushed that pole off the side just a very little bit, and you can see it holds a much tighter corner. And that's what you want, okay? Because that pole is now way out here when it subdivides, okay? So, with that in mind, I'm going to mention one thing. If you have machine tools installed, it's probably the best Blender add-on that doesn't come with Blender, in my opinion. Uh, machine tools has a feature... And you have to set machine tools up correctly, but you can see here I'm in the add-on preferences for machine tools under key map. And uh, there's a smart edge, right? Smart edge control 2 is what I have it set as, control 2 for smart edge. And I turn off offset edges here, which is also control 2. So uh, you want to make sure you turn on smart edge here. And once you do that, uh, what it allows you to do is to spin a single edge 
Okay, or I think you could do multiples. Let's try multiples too. So control two. And no, that didn't work. But you can spin a single edge, so control two will do that. Okay. And so this is how you can redirect your topology and have it flow in different directions. So you can see right now it's flowing in this direction. I select that edge and hit control two. Boom. Now the topology flows in that direction, and this one is transferred. I call it a switch. I don't, I don't try to say that I'm, um, I'm redirecting or anything too crazy. It's a switch. It's like a switch track on a train, right? So as soon as you start rotating things, you can, you can really control your mesh in a different manner now. You have a lot more control over what's happening, where, and how. But you can see that it does cause some problems, and so it might generate poles like so, all right? So you have to be a little bit careful and always pay attention to your mesh. It's probably a lot nicer to have it look like this. Um, however, on planar faces, okay, so any face that's completely flat, it doesn't matter if it's rotated or anything, but all the vert vertices here are uh, kind of lined up with each other and flattened. So you can see from the side there, right? That's a um, planar face. A non-planar face is when one corner lifts or two corners might be a little bit out of whack with each other. And that becomes a non-planar face. Okay with a lot of organic geometry, but uh, hard surfaces, it's advisable not to use that if possible. Although it will occasionally happen. Actually, quite often it happens. And uh, just keep that in mind because what, what this is going to do is as you're working on your mesh, you can add loop cuts all over and any kind of curvature you know, it can become flattened or faceted looking because of the, the loop cuts. But as long as you have everything as planar faces, you won't run into any issues with just weird slight deformations to the surface. Okay. And so this also applies to ingons and triangles, even if you're not using subdivision surface modeling. Uh, you, you can do, say, like triangles anywhere you want. You can make wacky ingons, right? As long as those faces are flat, planar faces, it's not really going to affect it all that much. Okay, and this is where um, a lot of people get kind of confused because they don't realize that you can't actually um, work with really crazy topology. And it's not a big deal because right now this is just kind of insane looking in my opinion. But if I subdivide it, apply that subdivision level one you'll see that it actually does turn into quads. It just creates poles and stuff like that. And so you can always grab these sections where there's a pole and start flipping things around if you wanted as well. Try to correct it or clean it up perhaps. Right? You just don't want to create errors. That's the big one. You can get some cool redirections going. Like this is a self-canceling uh, kind of loop here. Uh, they are quads. It's not very good quads, but they are. And this is going to teach you a lot about just topology and modeling in general. You can make things loop around and shoot back out or whatever. And so, keep that in mind. To do this manually, might as well mention it. Find the edge you want to rotate. It's going to be on two faces. And then just use the knife tool. Cut from one corner to the other corner. And dissolve the edge you had. And you could do redirect that way as well. Or switch it. So you can see how that works. Alright. And that's it for this one guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. And I will check you out in the next one. Alright. Take care.